All right, it's Wednesday. That means your guy's guy, Robert Manny, is here in New York City in Central Park announcing a brand new Guys Guys radio show beginning this evening at 8 p.m. Pacific time in Southern California on KCAA Radio, 102.3, 106.5, FM, 1050 AM. Our special guest is Japanese best-selling author and Zen money mentor, Ken Honda. He wrote this book called Happy Money. It's a fantastic story. It's about how we can shift our perception of money from one of anxiety to one of seeing money as what it is, energy and exchanging energy. I hope you'll join me this evening. It's a great talk. We're on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio Nationwide, Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Blog Talk Radio. You can download all the episodes, all 365 for free. Hope to see you there. Thanks for your support. Have a great day. It's Guys Guy Radio. Here's your host, Robert Manny. Welcome to Guys Guys Radio. This is your host, Robert Manny, welcoming you to the show. And we've got a great one for you today on Guys Guys Radio, the place where where men and women can be at their best. Everyone wins. Today, we're going to talk about something that's close to all of us, money. And it can be the source of a lot of uh, uh, happiness, and it can be a source of a lot of anxiety, and the key is really to look at money as energy and really get into the flow of money and have it work for you. Money coming in, money coming out. And we've got the perfect guest. His name is Ken Honda. He's very well known in Japan. He's considered Japan's best-selling Zen millionaire. He sold millions of books there. The name of his book is Happy Money, The Japanese Art of Making Peace with Your Money. And he has talked to people all over the world and a lot of very, very wealthy people to get the secrets about their perspectives on money. And he's going to help us out today. We're going to talk to him from Japan. So got a global show and uh, we're, we're here to help. Once again, on Guys Guys Radio, uh, we try to put information out there for you seekers, people who want to learn more and want the best in life. Um, who, who you know want to get past the, the news from the mainstream news and get more information, and then you can determine what works for you and what doesn't. And I think our guest today and our show today, you're really going to learn a lot. And I know I'm going to learn a lot because I read this book and I've had some uh, pre-conversations with Ken, and I think we're going to have a great time today. Let's talk a little bit about money. You know, what I learned from being a businessman in New York City over the years is that one of the the conundrums that a lot of my colleagues got into is that, and friends and uh, relationships where the more money you make, it doesn't really change your perspective on money. You, some, you think like, oh, if I only made $50,000 more or $100,000 more or a million dollars more, I'd be happy. But it's not about that. It's about your perspective because what invariably happens is people make more money and then they spend more. So they're in the exact same situation. Then they need more coming in and it actually ups the kind of anxiety level because if you do lose your job or you don't have that same flow coming in, you're going to be under an incredible amount of self-induced pressure. So the best thing to do is kind of get in a good sense of uh, how you view money from a positive perspective. Think about when money comes in, it's a good thing. And when money goes out to pay for goods, bills, whatever, it's a good thing. You know, you can't escape the flow of money no matter where you go anyhow. You might be driving down the five in Southern California. You might be on the E-train in New York City. It doesn't matter. You're going to be in touch with the flow of money all day, every day, because it's out there in the energy. It's out there in the consciousness. So the more you can make it work for you and the more you can feel good about it, the more you're going to attract money into your life flowing in, also flowing out. But if you can be appreciative about the things let, let's, let's put it this way. You go to a restaurant and you have a meal. You have a fish dinner and it has some vegetables with it and some rice. You don't think about, wow, somebody had to catch the fish. Somebody had to clean the fish. Somebody had to cook the fish. Somebody had to serve me the fish. Same thing with the vegetables. Grow the vegetables, pick the vegetables, clean the vegetables, ship the vegetables, cook the vegetables, bring it to the table. And that's a lot of stuff. So you might be pained by when you get stuck with the check, as we all invariably do, but think about all that went into it. And we're kind of keeping the whole world going with that flow of money. 
So money in, you made some money at your job, and maybe you didn't work the exact same amount, put the same amount of effort in all those 40, 50, 60 hours you did during the week. Maybe you took a little bit of time off, you know, when you're sitting at your desk and you're checking your fantasy football scores or stuff like that, but you're still making money. So the more positive we can be about the whole concept of money and, and view it as energy, the better off we're going to be. And our guest, Ken, is going to help us out with that. You know, I always valued uh, money, and I always made sure that I didn't fall into the trap of the more money I had, the more I spent. I mean, of course, you, you know, you want to buy some things when you make some more money, but you don't want to change your lifestyle um, drastically. You want to learn, in my opinion, what works for me at least, is I learned how to live with not a lot when I didn't have a lot, and therefore when I did have a lot, I, I knew how to live a more simpler lifestyle, so I never really felt I've never really felt a complete disastrous type of money crunch that I know a lot of people have. And it's very easy to fall into debt with credit cards and everything else. Um, but there's ways to kind of make your way around that if you're smart about it and you're not too greedy and too piggish about stuff and just don't fall into some things where, you know, more money's going out that, that's coming in. Now, listen, a lot of times we have to invest in things. We have to invest in ourselves. we got to pay the bills and we can fall behind and look at college education. It costs so much and, you know, that, that debt can go on and on and on for, for people who, for graduates. So I understand or if you go to medical school or law school, whatever, you could be paying that off for decades. I, I get it. So please forgive me. I'm not condemning people who have money issues because we all do. And I've had my share of money issues. But one of the things that's helped me is, and this is my point, is that I try to keep my lifestyle a little bit under and a little bit more simpler than the ma amount of money I have coming in, whether it's at the high level or not as high level. And that's helped me over time, knowing that I can kind of do my thing with maybe I don't need that new watch or I don't need that new pair of uh, kicks or I, I, I don't need that new car right now. I can do some repairs or whatever. You just, every once in a while, you have to say, okay, what do I really need? And the stuff you really need, you really need. But there's a lot of other stuff, particularly here in America, that they're selling us that we don't really need, but we want. And that's cool stuff, but you don't necessarily have to have it. So you can get a handle on that. And you can get a handle on the whole money is energy thing. It goes a long way. I was a paper boy when I started about as eight years old. And I remember I had two different types of customers. Customers who were nice and paid their bill every week when I went around and collecting and uh, gave me a nice tip. And then there was other people who were in such pain. There was such anxiety to pull those couple of bucks out of their pocket and pay for their daily paper delivery to like an eight or nine-year-old that it was a... Uh, it, it, I could see the difference in how people viewed money and then just the expressions on their face. I had one guy, he insisted he had paid, and an older gentleman, and I was like eight or nine, and he was probably 60 years old, and he gave me a real hard time. He insisted he paid. I said, you didn't pay because I keep track on these tickets that are on this uh, silver ring we had with these uh, with tickets around it. Uh, and I knew he didn't pay, but he said he paid and he made a big stink about it. And it put me in my job, even as an eight or nine year old in a precarious position, all because this guy wouldn't shell out, uh, you know, a couple of bucks and, uh, and give the kid uh, the benefit of the doubt. And I did a really good job, rain or shine. He got his paper every day. And I was sure that uh, he hadn't paid because I kept perfect records. But you never know. I could have been wrong, but still. It was so painful for this guy, and he refused to pay, and it was a big stink and everything. And yet, other people, and I, there was one family I remember there. I remember their sons. They were in my school, and they were pretty tough kids. And like, I was a little bit intimidated. Like, I have to go to their house and deliver the paper, and what's it going to be like? The mother was the nicest lady in the world. The father, the guy, looked scary. He looked like James Cagney in the movies, but he always greeted me with a smile, gave me a nice tip, and. Uh, you know, the, the flow of money, the feeling about money was completely different. So we see that all the time. And again, we can't escape the flow of money. So you can't hide from money. Uh, it's going to be there. So we might as well have the best perspective about it as we can. So our special guest on Guys Guys Radio today, we're going to be contacting him momentarily. Uh, he's from Japan. His name is Ken Honda. The name of his book is Happy Money, The Japanese Art of Making Peace with Your Money. He's going to give us some great tips about how to manage money and how to manage our perspective of money and how to get into the flow of money best-selling zen millionaire ken honda guys guys radio
Okay, here we are with uh, Guys Guys Radio, your host, Robert Manny. As I mentioned, we've got a very special guest from Tokyo, Japan. We're talking to Ken Honda today. And Ken has written a book called Happy Money, The Japanese Art of Making Peace with Your Money. And I think it's a really important book. But let me tell you a little bit about Ken first, um, because he's an amazing guy. He's a best-selling author of self-development books in Japan. He's sold more than 7 million books since uh, the turn of the century. And while his financial expertise comes from owning and managing businesses, his writings bridge the topics of finance and self-help. He focuses on creating and generating personal wealth and happiness through deeper self-honesty. And I think that's a, a key uh, foundation plank of his teachings. He's the first person from Japan to be voted into the Transformational Leadership Council. And um, he'll tell us about his website and where you can find out more about him. But he's just a very interesting guy. Again, the name of the book is Happy Money, the Japanese Art of Making Peace with Your Money. Welcome to Guys Guys Radio, Ken Honda, all the way from Japan. Thank you, Robert. This is such a great um, experience for me. It's such a great honor. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, my pleasure, and a pleasure for our audience, too, because um, as we were talking before we uh, started our uh, interview, I mentioned that I, I read the whole book, and I really got a lot out of it. It's very well written. It's very easy to read. So for our listeners, you know, the book Happy Money, uh, you know, it's not, a, it's not a deep dive financial tome in terms of the uh, blocking and tackling on finances per se, but it's more about how do we reprogram and re-paradigm our views towards money and make it a much more pleasant experience. So let's start with Ken. Um, I think a little background information would help. What inspired you to yes. write the book, and what were you doing at the time where you said, I'm going to write this book? So I was born into a successful accountant. Uh, uh, my father is a very successful uh, businessman and also accountant. So since I was a small child, he taught me uh, everything about money. And uh, luckily, by the age 29, I could have enough money to retire uh, for my baby girl. And my wife and I decided to retire for just a few months, but the few months extended to um, uh, four years. And during the four, uh, four years semi-retirement, I got this inspiration to write about happiness and money, which a lot of people ask me, why, why could you retire so early? Why are you so happy? And uh, it's, for me, it's common sense because I've known this since I was a small child. But I thought maybe this is a time to um, start sharing what I know about money and happiness, and which I did. And I started out um, writing uh, 26 um, essays and started giving away. And then uh, everybody wanted a copy. So I hired a printer to print more. And I got 3,000 copies. Uh, and then I gave them all away and people wanted more. So I printed another 5,000, another 5,000. And by the time I printed and gave away uh, about 100,000 copies, a publisher called me and asked me to write a book. And the rest is a history in Japan. Wow, absolutely. A great story and absolutely amazing where uh, this just flowed from you and you had some sound advice. What, what do you attribute the fact that you kind of uh, uh, gained this expertise on how to, your perspective on money, which I would mm -hmm. um, summarize, if I may, and correct me if I'm incorrect, Ken, that you view money as energy instead of money just yes. as paper. So how did you come to that um, realization? And then how did you kind of put that into writing? Because it's not an easy concept to translate. True, true. You know, uh, since my childhood, I've seen a lot of business people, and I realized that there are two kinds of people, happy people and unhappy people. It doesn't really matter how much you have or how much you make. There are just simply two kinds of people. And I, while I was doing business consulting, I uh, met this interesting, mysterious woman one time. At the party, she approached me and she said, Ken, can I look at your wallet? And at, at the time, you know, there are a lot of uh, celebrities uh, having like certain like a leather uh, wallet or something. Like, you know, American people would probably have some interest in uh, Justin Bieber's wallet, you know, right. or something or like that. Prada yeah. or whatever brand name, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, okay, so she didn't look so suspicious, so I gave her my wallet. Mm -hmm. And she took all the bills out, and she was just checking something. And I asked her what she was doing, and she, she smiled and gave back my wallet. And she said, Ken, you're good to go. Your money is smiling. That means... 
you are um, receiving money by doing what you love and making people happy. And on the other hand, if people are doing what they don't like and receive money, or if they're t、uh, trying to take advantage of people, your money is crying or angry in your wallet. That's what she said.、Mm -hmm. And I said, Really? <laughs> and, and I got this concept. Wow. And I saw a, a few friends whose money in the wallet, they're crying. And、uh, some of my happy friends whose money is probably smiling. You know, it's just a concept. And it, I got really blown away. And since then, I've been thinking is、uh, the money I'm using happy money or not happy money? Wow. Now, can you,、uh, since this woman did this to you, can you, do you do that to other folks now? Do you say, let me take a look at your wallet and <laughs> can you assess that? Or is it just that something that happened that sparked you? Yeah, I think it's probably you can intuitively know what's in your wallet. And,、uh, and a happy money is money that、uh, makes you smile when you receive it and gives you, gives you joy when you spend it. Whereas unhappy money is money that you, you feel frustrated. When you receive it and gives you guilt and also despair when you、right. spend it. So you kind of intuitively know、mm -hmm. if you're not enjoying your life and making miserable money, that's unhappy money.、Mm -hmm. So you create, you kind of, this is a, a spiritual in, a, in many ways because、um, mm -hmm. many of us believe、uh, that we create our own lives and it's how we define things. So if you have a positive experience, You're like a magnet. So, if you have a positive perspective, you can draw positive, positivity to you. And if you have a negative perspective, you know, when you start having that bad day and it gets worse and worse, it's usually because you haven't reframed how you're going to look at that day and say, hey, I learned a lesson here versus like, this really stinks. And then one thing happens after the other. It's the same with、yes. money, I, I assume, from, from reading、yes. the book, Ken. Right. And money gives you acceleration because、uh, if you start worrying about money, Well, worry multiplies like a、mm -hmm. snowball. And、uh, uh, most of us are in this financial worry and frustration, unfortunately. Whereas、uh, happy people,、um, they're just dealing with money and dealing with their life in a happy manner. So, unless you have, the, you have, to, unless you have this shift in your mindset about how to deal with money and life,、mm -hmm. you stay miserable. It doesn't really matter how much you make、right. because you could make. Millions of dollars and stay very unhappy. You mentioned something in the book that I have found、uh, and noticed over the years with friends. I'm here in New York City and worked corporate, my corporate life for 30 years or so, and now I'm building something. I'm doing what I really love. I loved some of my jobs and some of what I did for a living, and some jobs、mm -hmm. I did not love. And I think it did reflect in the money, even though sometimes I made more money doing things I didn't like than things I liked. I always felt it was more important. The happiness had so much more value. But one of the things you mentioned in the book that I found so interesting that I've noticed is the trap that many people fall into is that they start making more money. So instead of becoming happy and satisfied and have that gratitude for that, they end up、uh, changing their spending habits and then they need more. And then it, everything gets lifted up. So they get caught on this hamster wheel, if you will, where your lifestyle changes. So you're making more money, doesn't feel like you're making more money. It feels it's the same, if not less, because your, your perceived needs have changed and you want more. Talk to us about that, Ken. Yeah, you, you said it so beautifully.、Uh, since I write many books, I've written more, more than 50 books and, on happiness, work, and money. I interview a lot of people. And one time I interview a very wealthy man and I asked him,、uh, when did you start feeling wealthy? I, I kind of expected the answer that,、uh, that he was making a first million or just he made $10 million. Or, and I was so surprised when I heard his answer. He said, I don't feel so wealthy because I don't have a private debt. And I said, really? <laughs> and、uh, later on, I. I had this、uh, interview with a person with a private jet, and I asked him the same thing. And he said, No, no, I'm not wealthy. My private jet is so small. It, you know, it, can, fit on, it can sit only five people. My friend who, who's, who's wealthy, you know,、uh, it's a jumbo jet. So I'm, I'm not wealthy at all. So, like, and probably if I grab this、uh, guy with a big private jet, he would say, No, 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 no. My seats are so shabby. And, you know, look at the Dubai family. Like,、mm -hmm. you know, they, they furnish、uh, all the seats with gold or something.、Mm -hmm. So there is no end. 
So unless you find satisfaction with where you are, you just stay so miserable because your spending habit, uh, because of your spending habit, your expenses also multiply too. Mm -hmm. So you always feel suffocation uh, and also worry that uh, can I pay, pay all the bills? And if what if I lose my job? You know, mm-hmm. so that money worries haunt you. Right. And even though you're making ten times more money than you used to, it's still the same. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, another concept in the book that I felt it was so important is uh, in ter- terms of the perspective, reframing our perspective about money um, is flow, um, flowing in to your wallet, flowing out of the wallet. And you do something that I actually find myself doing is I, first of all, I pay all my bills and I pay them on time. And sometimes I pay them early. Uh, I don't necessarily do what you suggest, which is like, great. I feel great about it enough. (laughs) But I think it's so important to have that attitude where you're happy when the money comes in and you're happy going out because you're actually paying for something, whether it's your mortgage or food. And you think about, you mentioned in the book, all the different people who went into, let's say you have lettuce, the people who planted the lettuce, the people who picked the lettuce, the people who shipped the lettuce, the store people. You're, everybody's being helped by this flow, inflow and outflow of money. And we're part of that connectivity, part of that system uh, universally. And that's there's a consciousness there. Can you talk to us about that, Ken? Yes. Uh, one, one of my mentors, uh, whose name is Wahe Takeda, who's called Warren Buffett of Japan, he's uh, one of the most wealthy men in Japan, he said there's only a, a one key to wealth, that is appreciation. So uh, when money comes in, say arigato. When money goes out, also arigato. By just saying arigato or thank you to money, you start this cycle of appreciation. Because when you think, when you take a look at your life, um, uh, you zoom out and just look, take a look at it. It's, uh, every one of us is in the flow. We're doing something and then we're receiving something. And then uh, if you take a look at your lunch or dinner, look how many people are involved with this simple lunch and dinner. And uh, look at your electricity and uh, everything. And look around your house. There's so many things, so many people are involved. So when you take a look at what's going on, we're in this uh, flow of money and flow of energy. And uh, your life is, will be so different uh, either by your, your flow of unhappy money or flow of happy money. Mm-hmm. So if you feel appreciative when some, something comes to your life, either it's money or not, um, if you can appreciate you're in the happy flow. But if you feel frustrated all the time when you receive money or receive something and then uh, pay your money with grudges and frustration and guilt, uh, you're just giving money a bad energy. Mm-hmm. And then you, you feel miserable too. Right. So it's I, your choice. Mm-hmm. So you're not saying like just spend all your money. I think you mentioned in the book about, you know, you have to do your what we call the kind of the blocking and tackling, which is you have to learn how to save and you have to have some type of cushion there for yourself. Uh, you can't just spend every penny you have because then you'll be uh, e- even if you're feeling flow, you it, you know, it's a it's a precarious way to live unless you really know how to let go. So could you talk to us about your perspective on on savings and like how much is not a dollar figure, but how much is enough? What, what, wh- how you should look at savings uh, versus flow? Because you need mm-hmm. to have both. To be, it's, not, it's not just about flow. The money comes in and it goes out and you have nothing. It's yes. about, yes. you know, you have to accumulate some so you can right. you know, provide for your family in case of emergency and all that stuff. And you're not, you're mm-hmm. not saying, no, don't worry about that. But what are some <laughs> of the things that people can do to uh, yes. their perspective on savings and also how they can save? Mm-hmm. So I think uh, there is money IQ and money EQ, and let me talk about money IQ, mm-hmm. which is financial uh, knowledge uh, around money. So I would suggest you save just around ten percent of your income every month, and uh, which is which seems like very difficult, but if you know the difference between absolutely must and luxury, you can start saving money. Because a lot of us think, I need this, I need to buy this, I need, I need to buy that. But uh, I ask my clients to ask themselves, is this absolutely necessary for my survival? Mm-hmm. And if not, 
don't buy it, at least right now. Right. And then if you have a habit of saving 10%, you know, in a few years, you have enough money uh, for a few months or uh, um, uh, six months and a year if you just start uh, saving money. Because once you start saving money, you realize that you're wasting money so much. So you have to really understand what's going on in your life financially. And also the other part is like financial EQ, which is emotional intelligence. Mm-hmm. You have to feel comfortable around money. So that way you don't have to um, uh, spend, spend, spend. Uh, because a lot of us want to feel control. That's why we want to spend more than necessary. When we spend money, we feel control. Like, mm-hmm. I have the money. I can pay for this. But that's a bad idea because uh, you are doing it out of emotional insecurity, actually. Right. How, how um, you know, what happens in the States a lot, and I'm sure it does in Japan um, mm-hmm. and in other places in Asia. I mean, we were speaking uh, that I just got back from Korea and I noticed a lot of the importance of the brand names on the clothing and things like that. And I, I see that in New York City. A lot of impoverished people wear big brand names um, to make a statement. And it comes from, uh, um, I think, the, the media and I'm from the advertising industry Basically, we sell people a lot of items that they don't really need. How, how can the average person kind of start to manage that process so they don't get sucked into, I don't have the money, but I'll buy something that has a symbol that says I have some type of importance, even though it's completely false and ego-driven? How do we, how do we break yes. that pattern? I think we really have to be free emotionally first. Like we need to be, we have this, uh, drive to to compare with uh, you know uh, other people and keep keep up with the Joneses, Joneses in, mm-hmm. in English. Yep. Yeah, and and it's just, we have a similar saying in in our language too. But this comparison, like we're supposed to have this, like mm-hmm. we're supposed to have two cars or we're supposed to have a certain brand. I want you to ask yourself, really, because we're so sucked into this marketing system yep. of our modern business. So we may not necessarily need high brand stuff. If you really like um, high brand stuff and if you can afford it, it's great. But if you're not um, making that much money and still try to buy expensive stuff, you know, it's, it's a natural thing that you end up being in debt. Right. And so, yeah, you have to make sense. So I'm not, you know, since I have an accounting and business background, even though my teaching somewhat sounds spiritual, you really have to be practical too. And mm-hmm. you have to have the balance between doing it right and also feeling emotionally free too. Mm-hmm. You know, it's amazing when I was in, the, and as a marketing guy, I'm always, I look at the advertising wherever I go. I look at how uh, brands are presented, the packaging and everything. And and of course in Japan, you guys do such a wonderful job. And also in Korea, the very good job with that. But on the stalls where they're selling product, and I assume a lot of it was counterfeit, the one brand that stood out selling to young people was a brand called Supreme, which I see in the States a lot, um, but not mm-hmm. like this. Everything was Supreme this, Supreme that, and I'm sure some of it was counterfeit goods, but wow, just the name Supreme says better. And the fact that you know when you're in your uh, formative years, you would think you want to have some type of individualism, way to think you know, out of the box your own way, yet you're already being programmed like, this is the brand. Like yes. for me, it would be that would be the last thing I would ever buy, knowing better now. But all everything was geared towards that brand, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the brand whatsoever. But I will bet Supreme, that's featured everywhere now in Seoul, Korea, you won't see it there three years from now. There'll be another brand, maybe Champion, <laughs> which, which is kind of exploding now in the U.S. It's an old school brand that they elevated the prices and they brought them back and now everybody wants champion products. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's how the marketing wheel turns. And for mm-hmm. the for consumers, it's so tough to stay away from that. So my advice usually is, you know, take consume your media in small doses. Don't get sucked in. You know, there's nothing wrong with a plain green T-shirt or a plain black T-shirt versus having to have that same shirt with Supreme or whatever on it and play, pay such a premium if you're having money issues. And it's uh, to me, it would be uh, also a great way to break that emotional, uh, the EQ uh, problems that we have when it comes to uh, how we look at money here in the States. Yes, yes. I think it's everywhere. You know, one of the uh, interesting uh, boutique in Japan 
had a very interesting ad at the cash uh, cash register. Mm -hmm. He says, "Buy now, regret at home later." <laughs> I <laughs> love it. Yeah, I, honesty. I really like it. <laughs> yeah, it's very honest, right? So, and I think that's that's what it is. Like, uh, you know, we are supposed to buy now and then regret later. Mm -hmm. So that is a, a like a um, branding that we hear uh, all the uh, messages every day. Mm -hmm. So true. we have to be so clear on what, what we really want because our resources are not unlimited, but uh, there's so many things at so many different categories. And if, especially if we're a woman, like uh, there's uh, um, higher ends of cosmetics. Right. And if you're a guy, higher ends of gadgets right. <laughs> or cars, exactly. right. you know, like and I do a lot of uh, money counseling for couples and family. And what I find out is like, Men cannot believe women buy uh, so uh, expensive cosmetic stuff, That's you know, so in a small. little container. Right? Yeah, so small and like two hundred bucks, and it, right. it's supposed to uh, take off your wrinkles, right. which is not even working. <laughs> <laughs> so true. guys don't get it, right? I, mean, at least in Japan. I don't know about US, but you know, guys it's go the same. crazy, like it's the same. yeah. And then uh, and women, they really, they really don't get it. Why do you hang around? With you know, you with your guys and go to sports bars and get drunk. You know, you're not you're not making anything. And guys saying we're building a network. You know, <laughs> right, right, right. Well, let's let's talk about that because one of the things, the other things you talk about in the book that I think is very important and something we can all relate to is the importance of having the the right network. Um, let me drop back for a half step here. You mentioned that, you know, uh, the family has patterns. So if you look at your parents and you look at your grandparents, you're going to start to have attitudes about money. And then uh, as you go on in your day to day life, it's very important also to have a network of like minded friends and business associates that you can feel comfortable with. Can you talk to us a little bit about, I guess, the influence of others and how important it is? Because there is an influence there and we can't deny that. You don't want everybody to control how you think, but you do have to work with other people and you do have to acknowledge and be self-aware that your beliefs probably came from your parents whose beliefs came from their parents. Yes, uh, so we tend to feel comfortable with uh, similar people. And, and that is a uh, similar background and a uh, similar income bracket, uh, uh, the similar kind of jobs. So, uh, but we're in, being influenced by people around us. So if you're surrounded by people, dishonest people who are making little money and trying to take advantage of other people, you feel miserable because you, you worry that somebody's gonna take advantage of you. But if you're hanging around, uh, hanging around with uh, uh, fun people, generous people and uh, make people who are making so much money and share so much money with other people, you feel very comfortable. So you have to choose the right people to be in the flow of happy money. You know, it's not just how much money you make. Once again, it's how you deal with money and life. Mm -hmm. And if you hang around with people who are very mean, cold, and, you know, they're grudges, you become that. But if you hang around with people who are honest, generous, loving, you become that. So you have to really choose the right group. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned uh, the importance of uh, having mentors in the financial area. Um, yes. And that's, that's a challenge for some people because some people are embarrassed. I don't have that much money. I have to, I have to talk to one of my friends who has more money or a business associate. And there's, you know, mm -hmm. they feel you know, insecure about that. How, how, do, how, do, how, how can people get over that? And how can they find and qualify the right person who would be a mentor? Because you can really learn a lot from other people. It is important. Yes. Yes. So uh, what I found out is uh, generous people and happy people, they love helping other people. So if you ask uh, uh, in the right manner, politely and uh, nice, uh, they're uh, likely to help you. And at the same time, they're very busy people. So not necessarily they, they take all the hours for you. But if you, uh, this is what I do. I try to find some project or volunteer work or uh, do something uh, that will make them feel fun and joyful. Uh, I usually have this private time with my mentor. That's how I learned so much from Wahid Takeda. I did a lot of events for him because he loved 
talking to young people. And I'm, I was, you know, I, I'm able to uh, attract a lot of people. I talk to thousands of people uh, all the time. So I, I could get uh, the right young audience for him. Mm-hmm. And he was very happy about that, about that. So when I had the chance to talk about these events, I can ask him uh, some questions about money. So mm-hmm. that way, you know, you, you can learn uh, so much from uh, the people uh, with wisdom. It doesn't really matter if, if he or she is younger than you, but uh, the people with experiences and wisdom. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is Guys Guys Radio. Our special guest is uh, Ken Honda. The name of the book is Happy Money, The Japanese Art of Making Peace with Your Money. A great conversation we're having here. It's Robert Manny, your host. Um, you've talked to thousands of people over the years uh, about money and the, how, to, how to deal with it and how to view it as energy. What, what is the, and all over the world, what is the number one obstacle that you find that people have in incorporating this uh, paradigm shift in terms of how they look at money and, and look at, at you know, uh, consider it energy instead of just, you know, dollars or whatever. Right. Robert, you're asking so many great questions. I'm so ha- <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy to answer your questions. One of the most important thing is uh, scarcity mindset. Mm-hmm. We're so entranced in this scarcity mindset. So what we, if we give, we're going to lose. And if we share, we're going to lose. For example, if we uh, share or give uh, like uh, $5 from our pocket, we lose $5. That's scarcity mindset. But uh, well, on the other hand, abundant mindset is if we share, somebody gets uh, the $5 and then $5 uh, go around, go around and then come back to you. That's like abundant mindset. So uh, if you know uh, sharing, is, is really actually helping you. Um, you feel uh, less uh, worried and less fear around spending when letting go of your money. And, and Wahe, my mentor, believed in sharing what he has. For example, he's, uh, he was carrying gold coins in his pockets uh, every time he goes around. And then he congratulates people with his gold coin uh, for somebody with a big smile. And he says, you have the best smile in the world. I congratulate you with this gold coin, you know, which is like worth mm-hmm. five, six hundred dollars. Right. And then she'd cry. Wow. And, and I asked Wahe, why do you do that? And she said, and he said, what would she do if you get a um, gold coin? And I, and I said, probably she'd keep smiling. And Wahe said, that's exactly what I'm doing this for. Uh, you know, with this only five hundred dollar coin. I can make her smile for the rest of her life, which will make her family happy, her clients happy, the people whom she touches, Mm -hmm. they're all happy. So this is abundant mentality. And then, uh, and I I ask him, but you're losing $500. So he gives us so many coins. So by the end of the day, he loses like thousands of dollars. Um, But he says, uh, money is like fountain. Uh, in in your backyard, even if you drink, drink drink them all or just water them around the plants, by next morning you know the water comes back to the, the same level. So if you, if you have that mindset, you know you 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 never worry about money again. And this is kind of hard to understand if you're so brainwashed in this scarcity mindset. But uh, once again, when you take a look at your life, you're you're in the flow of money. Whether you like it or not, you are in the flow of money. And then uh, think about it. If you don't hold, uh, let go of your money and just hold tight with your money, you cannot be in the flow. You know, it's almost like if it's food, you eat a lot, but you don't go to a bathroom. That's right. not healthy, right? Mm-hmm. Well, and if you don't so, eat, it spoils, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you have to keep letting go. It's like a, a fun game. And, and the more uh, you're good at, uh, more money and happy money, you, you get it back. Mm-hmm. Uh, n- another thing that you talked about, which I really liked in the book, because we both have a, a business background and I've been in the client side and as well as the service side in, in marketing and advertising, and that is charging enough, knowing that it's okay to charge enough for your services because 
you'll always find the right level. If you charge a lot, you'll get certain type of clientele. If you charge too little, you'll get a different type of clientele. You have to find what's right to you. But the really important thing I think you mentioned is that um, always going that extra step. Like you, you don't have to nickel and dime people. You might like you might delight your client by, you'll just do something extra. You just throw it in because that's just something you do. I don't know if I articulated that the right way, but could help me out with that, Ken. Yes. Um, once again, uh, sharing what you have is very important for your abundance. So sharing what you know, sharing what you can do, uh, that gives uh, your client something. And if you're willing to give more than you're asked uh, they'll be surprised. They'll feel appreciative of your service. Mm -hmm. So that will buy you a great, great reputation. And then when they uh, come up with, uh, uh, when they're asked if there is any good accountant, good doctor, good florist, mm -hmm. your name will pop up yeah. because you're always giving, giving, giving. It's not mm -hmm. like you have to give twice as much, yeah. like 5% more or 10% mm -hmm. more. That mm -hmm. really counts because it's about the feeling that make uh, that uh, you make their your clients feel. That's about loved, appreciated, and cared for. And people will want to uh, pay back to um, somebody who was very kind to you. And if you're kind with everybody, generous with everybody, that's what you get. For for Americans, for Westerners, if you will, what's uh -huh. the best first step in breaking that mindset of um, that scarcity mindset that, uh, you know, I want to do the right thing, but I don't know how to get started. I deal with this question all the time, Ken, with many of my guests in terms of, well, how can people get started? Like, how can they break out of that locked in way that they've been programmed? So in terms of money uh, and turning money into happy money, what's the first thing that people can do? Something that all our listeners out there can do today that they can they take their first step to changing their perspective to make their money from unhappy to happy? I suggest arigato in, arigato out. When money comes in, thank your money. And when it goes out, thank your money again. So that way you start the cycle of appreciation. Why well, I said human mind cannot focus on money worries and, and money gratitude at the same time. And that is uh, the first step for uh, uh, that you can do personally. Mm -hmm. And if you start doing it, um, I have this uh, uh, student of mine uh, who is a secretary. She started appreciating her boss uh, because mm -hmm. she realized that he could have hired somebody else, but he hired her. So she said, thank you. Thank you for this job. I'm so excited to work with you. And before she was complaining about the work situation. Right. And a few weeks later, she got a big raise. So, you know, if you start showing appreciation, your clients, your bosses, your colleagues, somebody, your family will appreciate you back. That is a first attitude. Mm -hmm. And once you feel like you're in the appreciation mode, you don't feel like you're being taken advantage of. Because the miserable feeling is somebody is taking advantage of you. Right. And I think... That's so uh, um, common in modern world. Right. That's why all the European, you know, they're, they're having problem, Americans and Japanese and Chinese. We all feel like somebody is trying to take something out of you. Exactly. That's why we have, a, you know, wars and mm -hmm. we feel so uh, uh, not treated equally. So, if, but it, once again, if, if you're uh, in this gratitude mode, you just, you can resolve all the fear, frustration and anger. And uh, for example, interest rate you're paying for the mortgages mm -hmm. is almost like the appreciation for trusting you that you're going to pay mm -hmm. back the money. Right. So if you can pay all the taxes and interest rates and mortgages as a, as a mean of, uh, means of saying thank you for trusting me, you, ch you can change the whole attitude. And the debt is the same thing. Uh, you don't have to feel burdened with debt. Uh, and some people feel it's a dark shadow, you know, dark, heavy, heavy thing. But instead, just think about it as a, as a love and trust that the bank and other people had in you. So instead of feeling like, oh, I have huge debt, you can feel like, oh, I have so much trust from somebody else, from the banks. That's great. Yeah, and if that. you can just, yeah, if you can transform mm -hmm. what you have in your head 
mm-hmm. and also in your heart. heart right. your, yeah, in, your financial life will be so different. Instead of feeling like heavy burden of debt every day, you can feel the joy to somebody, oh, trusted me, you know. So mm-hmm. I want to appreciate that person or the bank. That's why you're paying the mortgage and interest. So if you are in this gratitude mode, you feel so appreciative for everything. And that attracts more money and happy money. Fantastic. Um, okay, it's Guys Guys Radio, your host, Robert Manny, our special guest, Ken Honda. Once again, the book is Happy Money, The Japanese Art of Making Peace with Your Money. Uh, most of us who, if we're in a relationship or we have a spouse, that can be an area of conflict when it comes to how we view money. And to me, it yes. always boils down to values. That when you have uh, mm-hmm. one of the keys to a successful relationship is is values. It's not about how much money, but how you view it. What what are the steps you mentioned arigato? Um, and I would think it would be relative in this area also. How can you and your spouse um, get on the same page when it comes to money? Because money, as you know and have mentioned, uh, it, it can drive a wedge in a lot of relationships and uh, one, number one reason for many divorces. Yes. You know, the reason why we have money fights is that uh, we are born and brought up in, the, uh, in, in different countries almost. Because uh, one family, uh, like uh, your, your side of family, believes saving money is important. And the other part of family believes that um, making money is important. So if you are brought up in these two different categories, it's almost like the constitution is different. Mm-hmm. The, the, this family uh, it says save money and the other one says make money so that usually conf- you know conflicts but people don't know so if you're a couple or even if you're friends you have to write down what you're taught when you're a small child like my uh client clients my um uh husband brought something uh handmade and not expensive to the wedding and his wife thought it's a disgrace because from her area Mm-hmm. You're, you're supposed to bring expensive stuff, you know, and then like he didn't get it. Why do you have to show um, uh, that um, you're loved by buying expensive stuff? But it's like a different set of idea. Mm-hmm. And when they realized that they come from a di- different background, they laughed. Wow. But uh, that's a happy case. But usually we judge um, each other by thinking like, oh, God, my husband is so stingy. <laughs> and he doesn't have love. That's like instant judgment. So we have to write down what kind of judgment we have about each other. Otherwise, uh, you know, we judge people, but it's a cultural difference. And if we understand cultural difference, and then uh, you have to kind of like compromise. Like uh, if you can uh, bring uh, handmade stuff for this person, or you can buy expensive stuff for this person. And, but you, ha- you can talk about it. And if you can talk about it, you have less judgment and less fights around money. So uh, communication is really the key. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's interesting that um, people have so many uh, issues with money still. And um, doing what you love sometimes is a, is a, is a challenge. Let, let's just touch base on that real quick, Ken. Um, yes. Uh, I had a long year in corporate life, and at the second half of it was in the service area and advertising. And I got to the point where um, it was about making money for other people, and um, and some of them were very pleasant people. And there was never an arigato; it was just more. And then they would toss you aside. And I got to the point I said, you know what? I will be the brand instead of, instead of being making money for everybody else for their brands. I'll I'll be the brand and make money that way. But it takes time. So for the last couple of years, I've had really to bootstrap myself and really give, give, give by helping my guests, getting them out there. And now my audience is building. Now I'm on iHeartRadio nationwide. nationwide. Now we're on Spotify. We're on iTunes. We're all over the place. And now it's a kind of a tipping point where the next thing is it'll become monetization of the brand, which is which is me. How, mm-hmm. how do... You mentioned this in the book that in terms of timing and the importance of doing what you love. For a lot of people, they don't have the luxury. I had the luxury because I was smart with my money leading up to this point. How Mm -hmm. much time does it take to kind of reinvent yourself and get to the point where you can be very comfortable with what you're doing, doing what you love, and you can start to monetize it? You mentioned it in the book, but I want you to talk about it. Yes. Actually, this is my forte because I've been teaching people about financial independence by doing what you love. 
And to do that probably takes from one year to five years, depending on your background. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you know what you're doing uh, and if you know what excites you the most, it's going to probably take less than two years. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to do uh, what you have to do is follow your heart and do it so much with uh, so much passion so people feel like paying you for what you do. And if you can just um, uh, get everybody excited about your services, you know, people, people are willing to pay a great amount of money. So you have to do, do it so well so people say like, wow, you're doing so great. Thank you so much. So unless you're super excited about what you do, what, you, what you're good at, people are not going to pay you. It's very, mm -hmm. it's very simple. Right. So you have to build uh, your services or, or goods uh, uh, good enough so people are willing to pay. Mm -hmm. But you can do that by improving and by just uh, uh, always improving. We call it Kaizen, you know, constant uh, improving. By doing that, um, for the first five or ten times, things don't strike out uh, well. But if you just do it right, you know, you, you hit the gold mine. That's mm -hmm. what I did with my uh, books. I've written mm -hmm. more than 50 books. But um, after about three or four books, I started making hits. Mm -hmm. And one of them is a million copy sales. So mm -hmm. if you can hit well, yep. and, you know, people respond with a smile. Great. Okay, last question um, for Ken Honda. Um, how do you now, how do you define rich? For me, uh, being rich is the freedom to do what you love with who you love and where you love. So, uh, and whatever you like to do. So it's the freedom that whatever you want to do with whoever you want to do with and uh, whatever you want to do at the place, at your favorite place. So okay. if you have that, you don't have to have huge money, but you need some money. Mm -hmm. Great. I love it. So our special guest has been Ken Honda. The name of the book, once again, Happy Money, The Japanese Art of Making Peace with Your Money. Uh, Ken, tell our listeners where they can uh, find out more about you, your other books, and uh, your website, etc., social media, whatever you want to talk about. Thank you. Uh, you can find my information at kenhonda.com, K-E-N-H-O-N-D-A, as in car, uh, com. And uh, I'm translating a lot of information from Japanese to English. I'm going to make it mostly free so you can uh, f uh, free yourself from money. And once you are in the flow of happy money, your life will be so different. I've done so many uh, work in Japan, and I'm so uh, grateful that I can do this internationally. So hopefully uh, you find some tips from uh, this conversation and start freeing yourself. And the key is arigato your money. Fantastic. Well, Ken, uh, on behalf of uh, Guys Guys Radio and all of our listeners, arigato to you for all of the teaching that you did with us today. And I hope you can come back arigato. to the show with some more material yes. because this was fantastic. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you so much, Robert. I really enjoyed this time and bless you all and a beautiful life. Okay. Arigato. All right, we're back on Guys Guys Radio. Well, that was a very, very helpful conversation with Ken Honda. I hope you guys learned as much as I did about money and energy and why it's so important to kind of get into the flow. As we talked about right through the show from my opening comments to now, it's all about seeing money as energy and not just about dollars in your pocket and be, be open and happy with letting money flow out. And that helps money flow in. Just being a filter for that, let it come in, let it go out, and change your relationship with money can change how you view life in our society because so much of it is based on uh, finances and money. And uh, the more education we can get about that and how we can get into that flow, um, the less anxiety we're going to have, the, the, better, the better off we'll be just in our day-to-day -day because you're not going to sweat money the way you may have in the past. So this was really helpful to me. I hope, hope it was helpful to you guys also. It's Guys Guys Radio, your host, Robert Manny. We're on KCAA, uh, 8 p.m. every Wednesday, 102.3, 106.5.
10.50 a.m. We're now on Spotify. We're on iHeartRadio nationwide, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, KCAA. You can stream the show whenever you want from the website. You can go to my website, robertmanny.com. The whole Guy's Guy thing started with my novel, The Guy's Guy's Guy to Love, which is a rom-com, and it's just evolved. I let the brand kind of find its own footing, and brands always have kind of a life of their own. It's going great. We have some amazing guests on the way, and we're here to help. Guys, Guys Radio, thanks so much for being here. We're going to see you again next week, and you can download again any of our shows uh, online, also Blog Talk Radio, and uh, the book, The Guys, Guys, Guy to Love. If you want to help out, rate the show, review the show, subscribe on iTunes, or pick up the book, and just listen to us. And... Uh, and just be with us energetically. I really appreciate that. So, Guys Guys Radio, as I always like to say at the end of the show, Guys Guys, finish first. Finish first.